Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Ask NK. So some time ago, we talked about Blender being available for Android and this was pretty impressive as you can literally take the full power of Blender and do all the amazing things that you want to do on your Android device. So whether you're working on the phone or you're working on a tablet device, this has all the features that Blender natively has for desktop for Android users. And of course, we did do a full video about that one where we went through several things, things to keep in mind and of course, things to know before you get started working with it. Then there was a lot of you guys in the comment section seeking blender for ipad and yes the idea behind having blender for ipad is an amazing one owing to the fact that ipad has the power it takes and of course with the apple pencil there's just a whole lot of things that can be done another thing you guys were asking about in the comment section is the ui because what we have with blender for android is a direct one-to-one -one rendition of the desktop version which is just being ported and mirrored to android and having a bespoke mobile version of blender for ipad was definitely going to be more intuitive with both gesture controls and all that well the good news is all of what you guys have been asking for is now here as the folks at blender foundation have just announced with a small teaser the blender for ipad is in the works and might be coming even sooner than you think and here is Delay and Pablo to show you a sneak peek of what it might be looking like. Oh, what's this? An Apple Pencil? Hey, is this yours by any chance? Thank you so much. Nice. What, this? what are you doing here? I'm just using Blender on the iPad. No way. <laughs> Holy, is that free? Oh yeah, it's free and open source, just like Blender. You can, know, you can learn more about this on code.blender.org. Super nice. Thank you so much. <laughs> You're holding it upside down. <laughs> and that for sure was pretty fun to watch. Now you can see with the demo that we've got more like a full version of Blender, just like we had with Android. However, things are definitely going to be changing over time as there's a developer's blog that talks about beyond mouse and keyboard and goes through all the things you need to know. So here we get to see a couple of conversations that has to do with the idea that the folks at Blender are looking at making 3D technology accessible to all and fully embracing various platforms. And in this case, they're looking at devices that has to do with Apple, iPad, Microsoft Surface. I don't really think this is a problem because it's running Windows, so you can definitely get going with that, except, you know, the whole pen input, the Huawei Mate pad and the Wacom Move Ink pad. Now all of these would be pretty cool to have, however having these for iPad is one of the first ways to go. And then there's going to be a follow up with Android and every other graphic tablet that comes in the future. And yes, you might be saying, what about the Android one that you just showed a couple of, you know, days back? Well, that is an unofficial version of Blender being ported to Android by a community member called Epi, and that is looking pretty cool. However, the folks at Blender might be creating a more official version of the Android build sometime in the future after they are done making sure that the iPad version works exactly as planned. And this in its sense would be pretty cool. And of course, while standalone tablets are the primary target, the core design principles is set to apply across all platforms. And this simply means that both the UX and the UI improvements will immediately benefit regular tablet users, even as Blender is being ported to run natively on these targeted devices. Now, I do personally think that Blender's new initiative in using iPad as a start-off point is quite pretty strong because it simply fits the ideal blend of both performance, touch inputs, and development ecosystem. Like we all know that several tools have been put into iPad recently from ZBrush to Cascado and so on. More tools are now leveraging on the performance of iPad and of course the Apple Pencil to get things going. As modern iPads by default has serious chips in them, the Apple M series chip definitely delivers desktop level speed and has super energy efficiency which will definitely enable real-time 3d modeling and sculpting which of course is something that we've seen over time and if you're wondering what about benchmark things like cycles and all that can the ipad actually handle that effectively i think so the ipad will definitely be able to handle that as ipad already has the whole toy octane renderer running seamlessly on the ipad and recently when we talked about the new release of blender we did mention that blender is taking full advantage of the metal api from Apple, which exists for Mac OS's, and that same Metal API is the same exact thing that exists for iPad. And having that built-in support for both Apple Pencil and Multi-Touch would definitely allow creators and Blender users to create fluidly and take full advantage of what the iPad can deliver. Of course, the design overview here has to do with the audience, which is specifically Blender users. And in this case, they're saying there is no distinction between the desktop or the tablet users, as both mouse slash keyboard or graphic tablet users will be treated equally. Therefore, there is no specific intention 
of simplifying or tailoring Blender to appeal to an audience that might not be familiar with Blender or 3D in general. So the intention is to make Blender fully accessible for users working with those intended devices. So for example, artists that need a pen device for painting, sculpting, 2D animation, they can simply take full advantage of that. Artists that would like to also have tablets as their main device can also work with that. And at the core, artists that need Blender on the go. And I think this is the core purpose of creating something like this. There's a couple of challenges that the folks at Blender are currently looking at, which has to do with touch and pen, limited processing power and battery, which I don't think is a problem when it has to do with the iPad, but might potentially pose as a problem when it has to do with other systems or other devices. The siloed file system and quite a few stuff. Now there is also this thing where they get to talk about the input method, which actually deals with how you get to interact with it. And of course, the mockups. So with the mockups, we get to see what Blender will be looking like on the iPad. And there are two mockups to this. We've got the object manipulation, which actually deals with how you get to work with objects. In this case, we've got an asset browser, a very nice iPad oriented Blender user interface. We've got the wheel menu, and you know, we've got a couple of bars here and there. Menus have been shot into icons. That looks pretty cool. At the same time, we've got another mockup that shows what Blender for iPad will be looking like for those that are sculpting. We've also got some other cool stuff that gets to be presented here, like the outliner, the property section, the menus, and a few other things. And if we go by recent products that have been ported from desktop to iPad, using ZBrush as a very interesting example in this case, we can see that things are looking pretty similar. And I think this should be the way to go rather than having the whole Blender plugged into it. Now, I'm not saying that that is not a good idea. I'm just saying that the mobile device should have that mobile device feel while retaining all of the features and functions that the desktop has instead of making it a one-to-one -one look from what you've got on the desktop to that mobile device. Now, if you agree with me or you find it contrary, I'd like to know what you think about this design versus the desktop design in the comment section. Now, if you'd like to explore additional designs, you'll definitely find them within the project of Blender.org. And for development, the goal is to implement new core features in Blender while designing a custom application template, which is tailored for devices like in this case, the iPad. Now, there are many improvement and usability features that can benefit the desktop, based off this, and we can see some of them that deals with the quick favorite editor, the help overlay, we created shortcuts, icon supports for sidebars, and toggleable sidebar tabs, which is currently available for Blender 5.0. At the same time, some features will be more specific to the tablet and other touch devices. And this includes the whole multi-touch event and gestures, handling multiple active editors slash regions, the wheel menu, which is, you know, the new way of getting quick menus, and we have the interactive status bar that definitely tells you what shortcuts you're dealing with and what is turned on or turned off. And for the tablets and iOS, the folks at Blender are looking for developers. And this is where you come in. So if you know someone that is a developer or you know someone that has an extensive experience in the area of, you know, building Blender, touch event, or gesture support, file systems, iCloud, AirDrop, OpenSubDiv, let them know that their invaluable skills and experience are needed to bring this project to life. And they can simply reach out to the folks at Blender by simply going over to chat.blender.org or to the DevTalk forums. And of course, you can go ahead and follow up the development of these via the project.blender.org as well. Now, if you want to see this technical demo, this will be available at the Blender booth at Seagraph 2025, which is coming up pretty soon. And this will be happening in Vancouver, Canada. So they will be showing Blender running on the iPad Pro and shortly after that, a workshop will be held at Blender headquarters in Amsterdam to revisit the current design and workflow. And the outcome of that workshop will be shared right here. And we're definitely going to be here to inform you guys about all of that. So this is it. Blender's iPad initiative now represents a major technology and UX milestone for the folks at Blender, as this will be making Blender users to move from desktop slash mouse keyboard centric workflow and design to a fully featured pen first touch native experience. And with the folks at Blender using iPad or the iPad Pro as their initial launch pad, for mobile centric designs, Blender now begins to tap into the growing power of both Apple's hardware, the ecosystem, and in the future, this is going to expand to various other ecosystems as well. And if you compare this with other tools that exist out there, Blender aims to offer on a much flexibility, depth, and an extensive potential in the touch environment rather than limiting its users to rely on either mirroring tools or just working based off keyboard and mouse. So this is it for those who like to take a look at this, possibly you like to learn even more stuff, see the video that we did about the Android stuff, see where you can find amazing content, links to all of this is going to be in the description, so do well to check it out. Tell me what you guys think of this one in the comment section. 
And of course, if you like this video or you learned something from this, you can go ahead and give a like and don't forget to share with a friend. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.